Hello, everyone. Welcome to another installment of Tudor Wine Time. Now, today I'm actually accompanied by a humble cup of tea as it's quite early here in Sydney and I have quite a lot on the to-do list, so probably not the best idea to be drinking wine at this time. But please pause the video and go and get yourself a drink to accompany our, our little chat. I must begin by apologising for the radio silence in terms of our Tudor Wine Time instalments. I started these uh, towards the sort of halfway through last year and things just got extremely busy, so it had to go on the back burner. However, I'm happy to say that I'm committed to bringing you monthly installments, probably towards the end of the month, as I like to do a bit of a wrap up of what's come before, or the start of the new month, perhaps as well. So if you haven't seen any of these Tudor Wine Times before, it's basically a chance for me just to, to chat with you, for us to hang out and talk about all the exciting things that are going on in the world of Tudor history. I like to, of course, share books, I'm a huge bibliophile. If you follow my social media accounts, you will know that by now. So I like to share books that have crossed my desk. They're not always new books. They're, they might be books that have been out for a while that I'm enjoying or that I've purchased recently. I like to talk about exhibitions and events in the world of Tudor history happening and coming up. And there's always lots of those. And, and talk about some of the projects that I'm working on at the moment and things I'm involved in. So yes, a bit of a roundup of things that are happening. So firstly, how are you? I've missed you all so much. Please leave me a comment. Tell me where you're tuning in from and how you've been. How are things in your neck of the woods? I am coming to you from my study, as you can see, <laughs> in a very, it's a very sunny, but fresh winter's day here in Sydney today. We've been having amazing weather actually this winter. How's everyone coping with the all my Northern Hemisphere friends with the summer? I know there are some heat waves happening. I hope that everything is well where you are. Um, let's start with some books. Let's dive straight in. Now, because I haven't actually spoken to you on these installments for quite some time, I haven't been able to share the very exciting news of my new book. Yay, The Final Year of Anne Boleyn by moi, Natalie Gruniger. Did I even introduce myself yet? I can't remember. Hi, I'm Natalie Gruniger if you're new to this channel. So this is my latest book. It came out in the UK in November, published by Pen and Sword Books, but available, you know, at all the usual places online and worldwide. Um, I'm really happy with the cover. I love the cover. I think it's a beautiful looking book. So the product is fantastic. I hope the content's great too. Have you read it? Let me know. If you have, thank you so much to everyone who's purchased a copy. Thank you to all everyone who's emailed me and messaged me saying how much they've enjoyed it. It is incredibly rewarding and motivating to receive those sorts of messages. Lots of lovely endorsements on the back by some, some pretty big names in the world of Tudor history. Dr. Owen Emerson, Gareth Russell, Susanna Lipskin, Sandra Vasoli quite a few others out there as well. So thank you. Thank you really so much from the bottom of my heart. If you've purchased it, if you've shared a picture of it online, if you've shared it with family and friends, it is, if you don't know about it, it is a very detailed account of the final 18 months of Anne Boleyn's life. I spent three years working on it, researching and working on it, but it really is the combination of pretty much all my research that I've been doing since about 2009. So quite a lot of myth busting going on. I've double checked and triple checked various sources that people often use um, with some surprising results, I must say. So have a look at that, see what you think. Let me know if you've read it. I'd love to hear from you. So some of the books that have come my way recently, I'm very excited about this one. So this is In Search of Henry VIII's Closest Man by Peter K. Anderson. So it is, in fact, a, a biography of sorts of William Summer or Soma, however you want to pronounce it, which was the king's um, fool. So I haven't dived into this one yet because I've got so many on my list, but I am very much looking forward to it. And I will do because I will be interviewing this particular author on my podcast, Talking Tudors. So if you don't know about Talking Tudors, since... Well, how long has it been now? Since 2018, I've run a podcast which is completely for lovers of Tudor history from all walks of life. And I recently 
which is another exciting thing to share with you, celebrated five years of talking Tudors. So a big thank you to everyone that listens. You can find it in all the usual places. And I always publish the, the actual audios here on my YouTube channel. So if you can't find it anywhere else, it's definitely here. And I will be talking to Peter K. Anderson on the podcast soon. So I have to dive into that one. Now, here's one I received. This is an early reader copy. So this is not the, the actual cover. Hunting the Falcon, Henry VIII, Anne Boleyn, and the Marriage that Shook Europe. So this is by the wonderful John Guy and Julia Fox. I've started it. It's fascinating. I'm really enjoying it. Again, I will be interviewing both of these authors, both these historians on Talking Tudors very soon. They have dug into the archives and come up with some really interesting insights and some new information. So this is definitely worth um, grabbing a copy of. I think it's out. It has different release dates for the UK and the US, the UK is coming up pretty soon, September, I, I want to say, I should check that. So that's another one to keep an eye out for. Now, this is the latest one I've received. A Woman of Influence, The Spectacular Rise of Alice Spencer in Tudor, England. So, oh, by Vanessa Wilkie, I should say by Vanessa Wilkie. Has some really great endorsements on the back by various historians and authors. It's a biography of Alice Spencer, and I know virtually nothing about Alice Spencer. So I'm really excited to, to dive into this one as well. Um, it seems, she seems like an absolutely, just from the, the blurb, a fascinating, fascinating woman. And I'm just totally into 16th century women. So this is right up my alley. And perhaps it's something that you would like to. Speaking of 16th century women. So this one is not a new one. When is this one from? This is from, oh, 1993. It's a later copy, but 1993. So definitely not new. It's a study of, obviously, what it says there, women and property. So the reason I purchased this is because I was reading Barbara Harris's Magnificent English Aristocratic Women and loved it, loved absolutely every moment of that. And she mentions this book in it. And I and I was fascinated by this aspect of, of women and owning property and all that. So despite there being all these very strict restrictions on what women could do and what um, property women could own, they still forged ahead and did some really amazing things. So this is why I grabbed a copy of this, which I'm excited about. Now there's one more I'd like to share with you. Again, not a new book. So this is called Artisan Art, Vernacular War Paintings in the Welsh Marches, 1550-1650 by Catherine Davies. Now, I'm totally obsessed with war paintings. If you follow me on social media, you probably see that I often like to post or repost anything to do with medieval or Tudor war paintings. So this book came to my attention because I did a, it was an online well, I purchased the, the videos of an online course at the wonderful The Tudor Tailors. You probably know the Tudor Taylor group that they did. And they had Catherine Davies as one of their speakers. And she was talking about her work. So, of course, I had to, I had to own this. I should say there is an updated version coming out. So it has an introduction all about Tudor wall paintings, vernacular wall paintings, and then a gazetteer at the end. So I've added lots of places to my two visit list. It's kind of scary. Um, and lots of images. So all images of all the wall paintings and then details of where to find them. Many of them are in private residences, but there are some that are in public places as well that you can go and see, you know, in pubs, lots of wall paintings in pubs actually in England. And um, of course in historic houses and then in private residences as well. So I'm loving, loving, loving this book. Again, I will be chatting to Catherine on the podcast soon. So I look forward to, to that. Now, I've, I've had a few that I've been listening to on Audible that I wanted to mention. So I don't have anything to show you and a few PDFs that I've recently received. So firstly on Audible, I just finished Leia Redmond Chang's Young Queens. Have you read it? It is magnificent. Loved every second of it. Actually speaking to Leia next week for the podcast. So it's a... I suppose, um, I was going to say a triple biography, but it, she it's all about Mary, Queen of Scots, Catherine de' Medici and Elizabeth de Valois, which was Catherine de' Medici's daughter. 
and their lives and it focuses on a short period of time but delves deeply into what is happening in their lives and how intertwined I suppose their fates were so great and the audible book is wonderful I can't remember the lady who read it but it's it's fantastic so that's a good one I finished that so I'm now listening to one called The Burnings so this is about this is a witchcraft theme and it's by Naomi Kelsey and it's set in the 16th century What's fabulous about this book is that Naomi Kelsey used to write reviews for my website on the Tudor Trail. And from the first moment she wrote her first review that needed zero editing, I thought this woman is absolutely brilliant, a brilliant writer. And here she is with this magnificent book, The Burnings. And um, I think you'll all enjoy that. It's a really entertaining, audible read. I also want to mention three others. Now, these I only have at the moment as PDFs. Thank you to Pen and Sword Books for sending these my way. So Eating with the Tudors by Brigitte Webster looks fantastic. Brigitte is an expert in all things Tudor food. You've probably heard me chat with her and interview her before. Recently, I chatted to her about owning a 16th century house. Yes, she owns a 16th century house. And of course, the trials and tribulations and joys associated with that journey. So Eating with the Tudors by Brigitte Webster, really exciting stuff. I've also received Carol Ann Lloyd's new book, The Tudors by Numbers. So you might know Carol Ann Lloyd. She does lots of talks and she's a fantastic speaker. She has her own YouTube channel. She has her own podcast. Um, so go and check her, her work out. And it's a really original idea. So she's looking at the story of the Tudors, but through numbers and statistics. So great, a great, fantastic idea for a book. Uh, last PDF that I want to mention is called Inside the Tudor Home. I think the other part of the title is Everyday Life in Tudor England, 16th Century England by Bethan Catherine Watts. So again, I love learning about the nitty gritty of everyday life in Tudor England. So this is right up my alley. I wish I had the physical <laughs> copies to show you feel a bit weird talking without the actual book, but I know these are all going to be wonderful. All the authors will be on the podcast um, within the next couple of months. So make sure you have a look at those interviews. Tell me, what are you reading? Leave it in the comments. I'm actually slightly afraid to ask because I, I, I already sense that my to be read list is going to grow just from your wonderful responses. So I like to read a mixture of nonfiction and fiction. I tend to do my sort of nonfiction reading in the morning. Uh, I've been trying to be a bit more structured about it because there are so many books currently to read. And then I like when I go for walks, I like listening to audible books. And at night I dive into a, a fiction, usually something a little, that doesn't require my brain to be quite as switched on. So I want to hear what you're reading. Let me know. Now, Books, we love books, but let's talk a little bit about some exhibitions that are currently on. So there is a wonderful exhibition currently on, and if I'm looking here, I'm just looking at my notes so I get the name right and the dates right. So there's one called Lavinia Fontana, Trailblazer, Rule Breaker, and it's at the National Gallery of Ireland. And it ends fairly soon, on the 27th of August, 2023. So... Lavinia Fontana, I'm sure you've probably heard of her. She is the first, well, she's said to be the first woman to achieve real commercial success as an artist. A fascinating, fascinating woman. So if you're in Ireland or anywhere near the, the National Gallery of Ireland, highly, highly recommended. I'll actually be chatting to, to the curator, uh, Dr. Aoife Brady, today. I'm speaking with her today, but that podcast will come out soon. So I think that's going to be wonderful. So Lavinia Fontana was a Bolognese artist and she did some incredible works and was hugely, hugely, hugely successful. So I think that sounds incredible. Um, another exhibition that has caught my eyes called Painted Love, Renaissance Marriage Portraits, and it's at the Holborn Museum in Bath. And this explores the role of portraiture in the process of marriage in Renaissance Europe. So I love those marriage, I love all 16th century portraits, but marriage portraits are fantastic with all their symbolism. So that sounds really good. Let me know if you've managed to pop into that one. I have to, of course, mention an exhibition that is currently on at one of my favorite places in the world, and that's Hever Castle. So the exhibition is called Catherine and Anne, Queen's Rivals, Mothers. Now, that is on until the 10th of November, 2023. I have actually 
been to Hiva already this year, but I am returning because they recently announced, and you've probably seen the incredible work of Kate McCaffrey, Dr. Owen Emerson, and Alison Palmer there, who have discovered or rediscovered this incredible book of ours housed at the Wren Library, that in fact is the very book featured in Thomas Cromwell's portrait by Hans Holbein, the Younger. Incredible story. I'm sure you've heard of it. If you haven't, I'll leave some links um, below that you can check out. But so originally they had Anne Boleyn's printed book of hours alongside Catherine of Aragon's, which was fantastic, which is what I saw earlier in the year. But now they have swapped Catherine of Aragon's book, had to go back to its home in the US. And Thomas Cromwell's book has taken its place and it's there on loan from the Wren Library. So now you can see Anne's book, printed book of hours side by side with Thomas Cromwell's Book of Hours, which in fact appears in that incredible Holbein portrait. It's an incredible story. It's so, so, so exciting. And what's yeah. wonderful is that there are accompanying publications. So I'll show you the first one. So this is Catherine and Anne, Queen's Rivals Mothers by Owen Emerson, Kate McCaffrey and Alison Palmer that accompanies the exhibition. Lovely, lovely, lovely little book with lots of beautiful books beautiful, stunning images and information about their particular book of hours and um, books of hours and Kate McCaffrey's continuing to do absolutely amazing work in this area, in this field. So if you're not following her already, please do. In fact, all of the these people mentioned here are absolutely worth following on social media. However, However and Kate also put out another little book, Holbein's Hidden Gem, Rediscovering Thomas Cromwell's Lost Book, which is all about that discovery that I was telling you. And there's the portrait. And if you can see just here, this book still survives. What a discovery. It actually just gives me tingles just looking at the book now and thinking that Thomas Cromwell had it on his desk and Holbein positioned it there when he was setting up his scene. So it's it's absolutely amazing. Tr Dr. Tracy Borman says, the most exciting Cromwell discovery in a generation, if not more. So these two publications are, of course, available from Heva. So if you go to see this exhibition at Heva, you will be able to purchase those. But if you're not in the UK, don't worry, you can go to the Heva Castle online shop and they are also available there as well. So another exhibition that's caught my eye and that I'm so excited about is Holbein at the Tudor Court. So this is happening at Buckingham Palace from the 10th of November this year, 2023, until the 14th of April, 2024. And Yes, I am going to fly 21 hours to see this exhibition. That's how committed I am. <laughs> so this brings together over 100 works of Holbein's, including drawings, paintings, miniatures. Don't we love the Holbein miniatures? All these items are from the wonderful Royal Collection. And it's said to be, or it is the largest group of Holbein's work from the Royal Collection to be exhibited together in over 30 years. There will be an accompanying publication, of course, and I should have mentioned there's also one for the Lavinia Fontana exhibition, which, and I'm sure you'll be able to buy either of those online or in person if you visit. You can buy tickets now to the Holbein exhibition, and so you can book your time slot so you know when you're going. So I think they are all wonderful, wonderful, wonderful events taking place. Let me know if you know of any others in the comments. Let me know if you're planning to visit or have seen any of those. I'd love, love to hear all about that. So what else is happening? Of course, I already mentioned the five years of Talking Tudors. Very exciting. I think there's 215 episodes, free episodes out there at the moment. So thank you so much to everyone who's, who's written to me saying that they're enjoying the podcast and for anyone who's taken the time to rate and review the show, believe it or not, it actually does make a difference and it helps people find it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I should also mention my Patreon community, which I absolutely love. These people are, it's an incredible group of Tudor history lovers that support the work I do. And I am so incredibly grateful for this group of people. And what is great is you get additional content. So if you can't get enough of talking tutors and you want more tutor content, there's additional contact content available once you join the Patreon community. I'll put links below. You can, you can of course, connect with me everywhere on social media. 
I've recently, uh, talking tutors have recently joined TikTok, which is a lot of fun. I'm not sure that I know what I'm doing really there, but it's certainly a lot of fun to be there. And of course, Instagram and Facebook, I probably say I'm most active on my Instagram account. So I'll leave links to those below if you want to join me there. But it has been an absolute pleasure chatting with you. Didn't even have, I was so excited to talk to you. I just left my cup of tea there and didn't even have any of it. But please, please, please tell me how you are. Tell me how you've been. I want to know what you're reading, what is happening in your neck of the woods, any other great exhibitions that I need to to keep an eye out for. Please let me know. I'd love to hear all about that. And I hope you've enjoyed this installment of Tudor Wine Time. I look forward to coming back and chatting with you again later in the month or early next month. And be sure, please, to say hello. Have an absolutely wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your week. I will be in touch again very, very soon.